What's going on, guys? Once again, it's Glenn Cameron back at it again with how to build your business over here at the corporate citizen. Today, we're going to have a very in depth conversation about products, services, and business models. This isn't the type of conversation you usually see on YouTube because everyone is trying to use an aspect of a product service or business model and i'll explain what i'm talking about all right let's take turo good example turo is a platform that you can put your car on and make money you don't have to get customers you don't have to market it you don't have to have a brand you don't have to have a company name just stick your car on there and getting money. Now, this is what I call a template business. And one of the things that is very dangerous about template businesses is they get saturated and it becomes a commodity. In six to 12 months, mostly what you're gonna see on Turo is gonna be, unless you're in like Hawaii, California, Florida, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a struggle to make some money on Turo in my opinion. It's going to be a big, big struggle. But why are people putting their cars on Turo? You don't have to do the marketing. You don't have to have the website. See, Turo handles a lot of things that aim like, let's say it is my intention to go independent here in the Atlanta market in about six months. Because uh, one of the things I've done is I've slowed my roll because the first three months of the car rental business was a complete and utter shit show. I had all kinds of stuff going on. So now I've kind of slowed it down and I've expanded my timelines. So, you know, the goal is to get my dealer's license and then to get um, commercial insurance and then go independent. And I have a plan that that's going to work out really well. So unlike Turo, when I go independent, I'm gonna have to have my own website, I'm gonna have to market, and I've got to handle all of these pesky little details. Give you an example. And this is the difference between going on a template business and handling the pesky details. You ever heard of a guy named the name of Neil Bortz? It's a radio talk show host, it was here in Atlanta. And have you heard of Clark Howard? Now, Neil Bortz and Clark Howard were on the same radio station, but their income was vastly different. Neil was an employee and he took a salary. Clark owned the show, he did not take a salary. Clark got to charge advertisers for running promotions on his show. Clark was doing, Neil I think was getting like half a million a year or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. And I know Clark was doing about 15 million a year. Same station, different positioning because Clark was willing to handle those pesky details. He made way more money. And actually Neil was talking about it, that Clark was making way more money than he was because he handled those pesky details. So products. You, you will see someone, let's take those Hoover boards. Remember those boards with, with the two wheels? They were everywhere. That was a product that many people jumped on. Same thing as a template business. If there's a hot product in the market, people start buying it and they put it in the marketplace because it, they, they don't have to deal with those pesky details, those pesky details of you know marketplace research, the stuff that I'm teaching in the corporate papers. And what happened to that market? You can get these boards for $99. At one point they were selling for 350, 400. Now you can get them for 99. They've become a commodity. And this is what happens when a bunch of people jump on a product. It becomes a commodity. And what happens to commodities? It's a race to the bottom. This guy's doing it for 275. This guy's doing it for 265. This guy's doing it for 255. 
and it just keeps going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And typically when you buy these products at a certain cost, that doesn't change. Doesn't change at all. Now, services. Um, I am going to start a credit repair service with a little twist. I'll get into that. And one of the things that people do with service businesses, that's the fastest way to make money with a business. Because when you start a service business and you find people who need your product or service, they usually need it like now. So you can start a haul off start service. You can start a junk removal service. You could start a moving company. Parts of me thinks about starting a moving company because the margins on moving companies are really, really good. And, but you know, thing is finding labor and all the other stuff. But service businesses, typically, if you are really smart, you will get in a service business where you can charge a higher price. If you get into a service business where the prices are pretty low, standard across the board, there's a lot of competition, you can make money, but you can't make as much money. Like, let's take the corporate, bi the corporate papers, some myself. Who's my competition? I have no competition. <laughs> I have no competition. That's why I make so much money. There's, there's no one else who's teaching people how to sell holding companies, operating companies, start business. There are many people who are business coaches, but typically they will pick a one type of business and they will coach in that business. Like Keith Kalfas, he teaches how, you know, landscaping and how to start a landscaping business. And that's what he does. Well, I'm a little bit different because I don't, and that's why we're having this conversation, because you guys have got to um, make some decisions. What kind of business or what kind of product you want to get into? Because if you are looking at someone else and what they're doing and you want to mirror what they're doing, that can come and bite you in the butt. And I'm going to explain to you why. Let's, let's go back to the Hoover boards. Someone figured that these would be a good thing. They created them, they put it in the marketplace. That was the first mover. They made a lot of money, they made a lot of money. And then as it took off and then the copycats and the counterfeits, the price started going down. And that's what's called a temporary market. You do not want to get in a temporary market because the temporary market if you can get in at the peak, at the high side, and exit before it completely deteriorates, you can make some money. But if you get in, like, let's talk about my storage auction book. Making money A to Z with self-storage and auctions. I had that market to myself for about four years. Four years. And as I was, as more people were entering the market, and I was exiting the market, the market was it, was, it was somewhat of a temporary market, now that I think about it. Because when the shows came on, this taught people who had no clue that this even existed, that storage auctions were a thing. And all of a sudden, people start flooding the storage auctions because everyone was looking for the hidden treasure. And I, I talked about this, typically, you're not gonna find a lot of storage units that have amazing stuff, because it's population-based. I mean, one of the things I used to do was shop neighborhoods. I would not shop, you know, I would shop locations. If a storage facility was like an Alpharetta, like there's a public storage that is not too far from where I live, and some of the most amazing stuff came out of that public storage because of the neighborhood I was like, and there's not, there's that public storage, and there's another one that's further down Roswell Road. And that's the only public storage, only storage around here for a good 10 miles. 
because the next one you would have to go to Savoy and there was another public storage there. They used to be Sugard. So, and I used to get some amazing stuff from Sugard. I remember I got this unit, it was a twofer. What's a twofer? It's, a, it's two units to go for auction that belong to the same person. Amazing stuff, amazing stuff. I paid like 800 bucks for it and I made close to 13,000 off that stuff. Amazing unit. So that kind of brings up the conversation to buying your products. One of the reasons that the storage auction business was so amazing was I could get my inventory for pennies on the dollar. Consistently, month in, month out, consistently, I can get my stuff for pennies on the dollar. And th this is where a lot of, you know, like someone's having a conversation about cars. Once again, why am I buying used cars versus new cars? The cost of getting your money back, like let's, 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 let's have this conversation. There are many people who love financing cars for Toro, hire car, and they have this expectation that they're going to um, pay this $300 payment and make, because you know, typically with a car on hire car, you're gonna make 700 to maybe 1600 a month per car, depending on what you have, and depending upon the demand for it. And let's say you got a car that makes 700 and you got a car payment of 350 and you've got an insurance of 130. That's 480 out of 700. So you only have, you're only making like $220. So one of the things you've got to do is run the math on everything you do. You got to run the math on your process, cost of your products. You got to run the math on your advertising. Like, I don't run paid advertising for a reason. Um, ads can be really expensive and I don't have a paid mark. And th this is something else we're going to get into a little later in the corporate papers. Does your product or service fit a paid advertising model? You got to ask yourself that because one of the things is like, if I was to, let's say I was to teach let's say credit pair, how to start a credit repair agency. And then that's something I can run ads for because it's singular. Because here's the thing, your ads gotta <laughs> grab them quick. It's gotta like watch the ad, get a feel for what it is really, really quick. You don't have a lot of time. And that would be something, or I don't know, I haven't seen any Toro, how to see in the Toro business YouTube courses. I haven't seen any of that. But I'm trying to think uh, if I was teaching trucking, trucking is something you can run ads on. Um, there are these guys that are running ads on how to write books for Amazon, um, put books on Kindle and stuff. Um, so if you're running ads, it's got to be a concept that people can grasp really easy because you're, you're, you're not going to have a lot of time for an ad. An ad is an interruption. So it's got to be boom, 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 boom. And the corporate papers is, I mean, some of you guys have watched 30, 40 videos before you bought the corporate papers. So that's one of the reasons I don't run ads for the corporate papers. I'm going to come up with a product that I can run ads on. Because here, here's the thing, you know, with services, products, and business models, if you're trying to run ads on something that ads really, that's not an ad type product, um, I don't know. I don't know. Cause you know, I may test this out. I may test out this hypothesis, but the corporate papers is not something that I can just like, boom, you get it. It's like start a holding company, start operate. It, it's, it's layers. It's many, many, many layers. And that's one of the reasons I don't run ads because I would have to um, have an angle. And what, what do I mean by angle? Like, you know, how would you like to save 5,000 bucks on your taxes? Something like that. I gotta have that kind of angle to run ads because you gotta have your hook. But going in, once again, with products, services, and business models, you've got, to, you've got people out here who think that they're running a certain type of business model. Let's say someone has a, 
uh, retail business and they go out and buy these Hoover boards, right? And they, they're like, I'm retailing these Hoover boards, but they don't understand that they're buying something in a temporary market. Like, um, I don't know, I don't know a lot about makeup. So if I'm wrong, I'm going to be wrong, but Kylie Jenner, I don't know if that's still popping. I don't know because I haven't really checked into it, but makeup, and this is so funny, the biggest makeup YouTube channels are by gay men. <laughs> that's kind of funny, but uh, that's one of the reasons that they're in this is makeup is a consumable. And this is one of the things when you're sitting down doing for your business model. Let's say you sat down and you wanted to create some type of makeup product. Let's, let's go ahead and say lip gloss, right? And you create your lip gloss and you create your business model and you make your lip gloss really popping where, they, where the girls really like your lip gloss. That's a consumable. So they buy it, they use it, then they come back and they buy it again. So as you build out that customer, that business model of a consumable, because you know that, that's something that I would really like to get into is having a consumable because it's reoccurring revenue. Because let's say your first month you get 100 customers and then they re-up they re three months. So your first three months you get like 300 customers and then boom, the fourth month, that first round of customers are buying again. And then you get, you know, as you build it, as you build it, and the economies of scale get crazy on a consumable. Uh, this is why grocery stores, this is why Publix, this is why Target, this is why Walmart sell groceries, because they're consumables. You come back over and over and over again. So if they get you as a customer, because for the record, I'm not a Walmart shopper. I've not been in the Walmart 10 years. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since I've been to a Walmart. I am more of a Target shopper. But when you're sitting down with your business model, you need to do a lot of mapping stuff out. I know I'm all over the place with this video, but hopefully you guys are getting it because you got people out here who are doing what I like to call copycatting. Uh, strange thing. I heard this thing called U-Hauling last night. When someone tries to move in, they hauling their stuff in. You hauling. It was it was funny. You hauling. I've had like five chicks try to move in with me. And I'm like, uh, no, I don't want a roommate. And I don't see you as that type of girl. But when you're doing your business model, you've got to always work the numbers. And more importantly, for your product or service, you need to know if your market is growing or your market is dying or your market has matured. Now, what's a mature market? Let's say, well, I don't really, I don't have a good ex example of this, but I will talk about, there's this book called Upshift, and he talks about, when I was a kid, the Suzuki motorbikes were all the rage, and then they just stopped selling. And the people who were consuming these Suzuki motorbikes aged out the demographic, because this is the thing you will notice. And I was having this conversation with one of the girls I was dating last night. You know, she, she's just changed. And she's like, there's certain things she used to do, she no longer does. And as you get older, you don't need that stimulus that you have when you're younger. You just don't need it. You, you, you can like, I mean, for me, I'm 54 years old, two or three trips a year, I'm good. I don't have no need to always be on the plane to be in a different country. If that's your bag, that's your thing, fine, all well and good, enjoy yourself. But for me personally, I don't need that. One or two, three trips a year, I'm good. <laughs> I am perfectly content to putter around the house and just drive around Atlanta in my Porsche. I'm happy doing that. But once again, you got to know who is gonna buy your product, who's gonna buy your service. Who wants that? Who, who, who has a need for this? Um, once again, you've got to know if your market is growing and dying because I had a friend who invested like 25,000 on these Hoover boards. First month was great, but the sixth month he was selling them at cost to get rid of them just to get his money back. 
So that's something that you definitely want to avoid. And this is one of the reasons I create my own products. When you create your own product and you do your own marketing and you build your own audience, you have less competition. You have way less competition. And um, there are so many things, you know, because uh, like I said, I'm going to do the credit agency and I'm going to do um, a clothing brand. And that that's <laughs> I'm going to be talking about this in the corporate papers because one of the things I learned, and I learned this with Hustlers Kung Fu, that product was supposed to come up with a t-shirt. Never actually got around to getting that t-shirt, my bad. Um, but that t-shirt actually sold the products. And one of the things I was doing on Teespring was I was selling t-shirts for 100 bucks, but when you bought that t-shirt, it included access to a course. So there, there's a whole bunch of stuff here and this is kind of like the first conversation that we're having about products, services, and business models. Because if you're not really sure on your business model, it's going to be hard to make money. It's going to be really, real hard to make money. Like my business model, I have an inbound marketing business model. That's why I don't run paid traffic. What I do is I do direct response. I put out content. Um, once again, if you notice, I've changed up the thumbnails. The thumbnails don't have words on them. That's for a reason. I am testing that out and I'm going to test it out this whole month and I'm rotating a certain group of thumbnails because I'm, I'm seeing what works and what doesn't work. And I've had some of those videos do really, really well. And I'm working on talking about more business topics because I will never get into the Kevin Samuels and the fresh. Uh, now, I'm going to keep this channel 100% business and business models and products and services and having conversations like this because there's plenty of channels where you can go to for the gossipy stuff. I'm not going to mess with the gossipy stuff. But you got to have a firm grasp on what your business model is and who your customer is. Like, who's my customer? My customer is the first time entrepreneur. And I'm starting to get more seasoned entrepreneurs who've already been in business and they, don't, they know their corporate structure isn't set up. There were many people who were unable to get the EDIL loan and unable to get um, PPP money because they weren't set up properly. And there, there's so many people who are in that situation where they're just not set up properly, but because they haven't really, here, here's the thing. This is what I like to call the just-in-time hustler. Many people come online, like Toro, you have having people who have no urge to be an entrepreneur, but they're throwing their car on Toro because they can make some extra money. That's the big drive. And the just-in-time hustler, there's so many people who will just start doing some stuff to make some money, with no real plan, with no real agenda, with no, no long-term plan. Like, I, I'm about to blow your mind. Do you know there, there are people who are called product designers? They, they design the product packaging. Google it. Google product patchy, packaging design. And these folks get paid a lot of money. And I'm gonna tell you why. And this is one of the elements of business you need to know. Women will buy something because it has nice packaging. That's it. Oh, this is cute. It goes in the bag. Women do that all of the time, all of the time. And this is why you will see certain things cater to women. This is why you see the curvy bottles. This packaging is everything for women. It is everything. And these people who design product packaging, I mean, they, like, they will design your labels. They will design your bottles. They will design their cartons. Like Apple, anyone that's bought an Apple product, you know that the packaging is simple. You've got the little plastic, you pull a tab, you open it, you pull it out. It's very minimalism. All of their, you know, Apple products, Apple Watch, Apple iPhone, MacBooks, iMacs, they're all the same exact way. And there was a lot of time, effort, and energy went into designing their packaging because their packaging is part of their brand. 
Everything about Apple is simple simplicity. That's Apple. You pull it out, you pull it out, the keyboard automatically hooks up, mouse automatically hooks up. That's part of their brand. And we'll, we'll be talking about that. But this is just a conversation to say, guys, don't just go out and get on a product because it's hot, because that product could be in a market that is dying, <laughs> like these Hoover boards and so many things. And you know, if you're, you wanna be a trend chaser or a hype beast, hype beast, Google hype beast, these are people who are very trendy, They're, they'll buy the Supreme stuff, uh, very much a very big market, very, very big market. But once again, guys, really sit down and think about your business model, think about your service, think about your, your product, and actually do a lot of research, not just a little bit, a lot of research on who will be consuming your product or service. Because that's everything. That is everything. Because uh, I've looked, you know, I've been testing out some stuff and messaging and everything. And next month I got some other ideas of some stuff I'm going to test out. So that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you're ready to enter into this entrepreneur world, go ahead and get into the corporate papers. If you bought the corporate toolbox last year, you're getting the YouTube training, which is going to start probably next week. And if you're getting to the corporate papers, I will give you a deal on the YouTube training. So go ahead and get in. The price is going up October 1st, for real, for sure, for sure. And a lot of people say, hey, give me some time. Give me some time to get in. Okay, you've had time. And then the price is going up October 1st. So go up below, use promo code August and get in that link. And I will see you in the corporate toolbox. Not the corporate toolbox, the corporate papers. The corporate papers, the corporate papers. I will see you in the corporate papers. That's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next one.